Did you know that most Americans spend approximately 10 to 15% of their entire income on food? So even just cutting down this amount by 10 to 30% can make a huge difference. Of course, knowing where to start can be tough. So I'm sharing the ultimate guide to frugal grocery shopping so you can get started on your saving journey today. Number one, no unit pricing. One of the best ways to make sure you're getting the best deal is to know the price per unit. It's a very easy calculation that you can do on your phone. All you have to do is take the price of the product and divide it by unit of measurement. Typically, this will be weight, like ounces or pounds, and sometimes it'll be the number of items. For example, the price of a single apple at Walmart is $2.08 a pound, and a bag of apples costs $1.71 a pound. This leads me to the next important point, which is that bulk isn't always better. Knowing unit prices can help you figure out what's exactly the best deal for your money. In this example, it was the bag of apples. Number two, store brands. When you shop, do your best to avoid any brands that aren't store brands. The reason is that store branded items are much cheaper and can help you reduce your grocery bills significantly. Not to mention that there's often very little difference between a store brand product and the leading brand. A great example of this is flour. At Walmart, the price of a five pound bag of store brand flour costs $2.12, whereas the leading brand costs almost double at $4.12 a pound. I've used both flours for all sorts of baking and there's no noticeable difference between them, aside from spending double the price. Number three, there's a difference between stores. This may be obvious to some, but it's worth mentioning. With your newfound knowledge of unit pricing, you can take some time to compare the prices of different grocery stores. For example, Trader Joe's and Aldi. You'll likely notice that the price difference between the two stores is pretty major, and it may make you rethink where you do your shopping to save money. Bonus tip, look for wholesale food stores in your area. You can do a quick Google search and you'll likely find something where you can get some awesome deals on food at either discounted prices or generally cheaper food that can be bought in bulk. Number four, use a cash back credit card. If you're disciplined enough, this can be an excellent option to make the most of your grocery shopping. Essentially, a cash back card will give you a small percentage back on all the purchases you make. If you can keep your credit card payments on time, then you'll effectively end up with a one to 2% return, which is always welcomed. There are some cashback cards that offer higher rewards, so do some searching to see what works best for you. Number five, pay with cash. On the other hand, if you're not that disciplined and worry that you won't be able to pay your credit card on time, then sticking to cash is an excellent choice. The reason is that it forces you to stick to the amount that you brought. You can't overspend if you don't have the money to overspend, right? This tip does require some planning because you should know approximately how much your groceries will cost before you go, and you don't want to be under. Number six, bring your own bags. This is becoming more and more common, and if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet, now is the time. Bringing your own bags to the grocery store will help you save money by not having to purchase bags every time you shop. It's also much better for the environment and it helps your home stay clutter-free. However, the biggest benefit is that there are several stores that actually pay you to bring your own reusable bags. It's usually around five cents per bag, but who wouldn't want to be paid just for bringing reusable bags? Number seven, decrease how often you shop. This can be a really tough one for some of you especially those who go through certain foods quickly or are forgetful. Ideally, limiting your grocery visits to once a week is a great start to being a more frugal grocery shopper. However, saying this is one thing, but doing it is another. One of the biggest issues with shopping frequently is that you forget to buy something you need. However, I challenge you to go throughout the week without the item to stick to your shopping day. 
This will be a time to start making use of what you have in your home. Get creative with dinners and learn about ingredient substitutions. Enjoying the video so far? Let us know by giving the video a thumbs up. Number eight, check your receipts. How many of you check your receipts after you shop? It's becoming less and less frequent to do this, but it's one of the best ways to make sure that you paid exactly what you were supposed to pay for your groceries. If you're someone who likes to buy deals, clearances, and specials, it's especially important to check receipts. The big reason is that many times specials are put out quickly and can sometimes not be logged into the computer. So always be vigilant and go back to the store if you notice something off with your receipt. Another option is to fill out the free surveys they have. You can win big cash prizes and it only takes five minutes to fill out. It may be a slim chance, but you never have to pay to win. Number nine, watch the register. Another way to make sure you're always paying the right amount is to watch the register. In fact, I'd recommend this, especially for those clearance items, because you can catch it before you pay for everything, which is just more complicated and time consuming. Number 10, avoid aisles you don't need anything from. It's funny that it almost feels like we're supposed to walk through the grocery store aisle by aisle, but we don't actually have to do that. The problem with walking through every single aisle of the store, whether you need to or not, is that you expose yourself to the risk of spending on things you don't need. You might see a deal that's just too good to pass up, and suddenly you've spent money unnecessarily. The only way to avoid this is to make sure you have a grocery list and stick to the aisles that you need things from. Otherwise, avoid them entirely and walk the perimeters. Number 11. Use the produce scale. The produce scale can help you get the best value possible on fixed price products. The reason is that most fixed price products are bagged, but they're never bagged to the exact same weight. Some are smaller and some are bigger. So measuring the bags to find the biggest one will result in you getting the best deal. For example, let's say you want to buy a bag of potatoes that weighs approximately five pounds. You start weighing the bags and find one that goes up close to six pounds. You're effectively getting a great deal by paying the same price for a five pound bag of potatoes, but getting six. Number 12, buy groceries online. The advent of online grocery shopping is truly amazing, but it's severely overlooked. I'm a big fan of online grocery shopping for a few reasons. Firstly, it's way more convenient than having to go in store. All you need to do is take your time in the comfort of your own home and pick out the items you need. You don't even need to do it in one sitting. Then you select a time and pick it up. The greatest part is that it's usually free to order groceries online and pick them up. Secondly, the fact that you don't have to be physically exposed to deals and sales can help you easily stick to your list and get exactly what you need. This can help curb those nasty sales that are made to tempt you. Lastly, if you're feeling tempted to buy more than you need, all you have to do is put your phone down and do something else. You're not tied to finishing shopping, even if you don't feel good. Number 13, invest in a food storage system. There are two major food storage systems that can go a very long way in making your frugal grocery shopping abilities maxed. Firstly, a chest freezer. I have one at home and I can't tell you how useful it's been to buy things like meats on sale or just to freeze bulk dinners that we want to save for a later time. One small freezer isn't enough for our family, so this goes a long way. The second is a vacuum sealer. This handy little device can help keep the food you love fresh for an extremely long time. It acts as a sort of preservative, but without preserving. This is really useful if you want to save parts of fruits or veggies that would go bad if exposed to oxygen, like a cut up apple or avocado. Before I show you this last tip, let us know your guide to frugal grocery shopping in the comments below. Number 14, buy frozen fruits and veggies. This is especially useful when fruits and veggies are out of season. For example, if you live further north, You'll want to avoid buying fresh fruits and veggies during the winter as they'll be extremely expensive and the quality usually isn't that good. 
Frozen fruits and veggies are always picked fresh, but frozen and sold in stores. Not only is this very convenient since they're usually cut up, but you end up saving a lot during those times when produce is very expensive. 